Hello, I'm Ron Clark. Um, <clears throat> I want to talk today about the elements. Now, I'm looking over uh, the latest book, Companions Along the Way, and looking back at my previous commentaries and other things that I've said along the way, I just realized that I really haven't talked about the elements in any kind of depth. I sort of gloss over, you know, this is the exercise, do this, and you'll have this result, blah, blah, blah. Um, but, you know, it <laughs> kind of surprises me, actually, because the elements and the vital fluid, the vital energy, are just fundamental parts of hermetic magic, especially Barden's hermetic magic, you know. The elements aren't fairy tale. They're not make-believe. They're real. They're actual physical realities. And I know this because I've felt it. I feel it in my body through the exercises, initiation in hermetics. I've come to know that the elements are factual, real, Things that have a physical effect in my body, my actual body, strong, concrete, physical effects. And with that knowledge, I can accumulate and project these elements so that they have an equal, actual, physical, concrete effect on other things and other people, situations. The elements are real. And that's what the exercises and initiation in hermetics will teach you, and the whole point of these exercises, so that you can understand that the elements and the vital energy are real, concrete, Things that you can manipulate. We don't create the elements through these exercises. You know, it's not a creation of our imagination that we concretize and make effect. Not at all. The elements are everywhere in the universe. And so what we do is we draw them out of the universe. We isolate them, and then we you know, use them in whatever way, and then they return naturally to the overall universe. So we don't create anything here. We're just borrowing. We're borrowing and moving the elements along in their natural cycle. You know, it's all moving. It's all recombining constantly. So we're borrowing the elements from the universe and doing something with them. We're not creating. We're using our powers of creative imagination to make contact with the elements. So, in these exercises, um, the instruction is starting out with your eyes closed and you imagine the universe totally full of this element. Let's start with the fire. The universe full of fire. There's nothing else in the universe completely surrounding you. And you inhale that. So, what you have just done is you've used your creative imagination, a mental thing. So you are creating something on the mental plane. You are creating this image of the fire on the mental plane, and it has all these attributes of the fire, the heat, the intensity, the frenetic activity, it has all those, but you're creating this on the mental realm. Well, the basic law of the mental realm is like attracts like. So you're just right there from the beginning making a connection on the mental plane with the factual, real fire element. And that comes down to the astral plane and into the physical plane. 
and you experience that element in your body because you are physically inhaling this imagination into your body. That's poor breathing. You're just, you're physically sucking it into your hollow body. You know, it's just, it's a physical act, which means, you know, it's mental, astral, physical. Everything physical has an astral and mental reality. So you're, you're connecting everything. You're connecting that, that desire and, and connection you've made on the mental plane with the factual fire element and bringing it down into your physical experience of reality. So these exercises touch all three levels of your being and involve all three levels of your being. At an astral level, it's your desire. You know, you're desiring to make contact with the fire element. You're adding your astral desire, want, your need to make contact with the fire element. I mean, this is a magic formula right there. So it's inevitable through these exercises that you will connect with the elements. So with the fire element, you have the fire raging outside of you in whatever way you're imagining this. Probably has a reddish orange color of varying degrees like flame um, and it's just really intense and so you're inhaling this. Now what you're inhaling is heat and that frenetic activity of the flame, a million little flames filling your body. Your body is completely empty going into this. You just have a hollow shell with a skin. On the outside of this skin is all this fire in the universe. And so you're breathing in this warmth, this heat, and this frenetic activity, and you draw it into your body, and it won't take long, I am sure, before you begin to feel warmth. I mean, that's the first thing I think. You feel a heat in your central core, this heat, and inside in your empty shelf, in empty self, you know, you, you begin to, to sense this frenetic activity of the fire. It's starting to zip around everywhere. The flames are beginning to fill your body, and the heat they're producing is beginning to warm you from the inside out, really. Then you eventually feel the, the heat in all of your limbs. You want to spread your awareness throughout your whole body during this. You want to be aware of what you are feeling when you do this. So you inhale it, and it comes into your body. Then you exhale just sort of empty air, because you've got to breathe, right? You're not exhaling the fire that you breathed in. You're holding on to it. Um, <clears throat> unless, of course, you're just breathing it in and out. Um, <clears throat> so, we're talking here about the, the drawing in, filling your body with the elements and the accumulating them. Right? So you draw it in. You, you draw this feeling into your body. You exhale air. Then you draw it in again, and then you exhale air. You draw it in, draw more of it each time, and slowly that fire, that frenetic activity within you fills your whole body bit by bit, more and more and more until you're full. Say like 10 inhalations. Your body is full. It's comfortably full. It doesn't feel any, you know, great pressure. It's just full, okay? So, as you're doing this, 
your you 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 establish your visualization, your imagination, exterior imagination of the universe of fire surrounding you with your eyes closed. You're inside your empty body. And you inhale, you pull all of that in to you with your breath. So you reach the fullness of your breath. You know, really focus while you're breathing, while you're inhaling on what you are breathing in, what what's coming in, that that flame, the the internal fire and the internal heat. Focus mostly upon that. Focus less upon what you've imagined surrounding you. And then when you exhale, focus on the imagination of the external fire. So you reaffirm that. So when you inhale again, you're inhaling that fire. And then at that time, focus on what you are actually inhaling and the effect that it's having in your body. Go back and forth with your attention. Because it does require, you know, this back and forth of your attention because it's pretty near impossible to maintain your external imagination while you're focusing on, you know, inhaling these specific effects, okay? So shift your focus between what's inside and what's outside and what's inside and what's outside and that, you know, that transition of drawing it in. Yeah, that's the important thing to focus on. Because ultimately, probably after a very short while, the, the outer imagination is going to become un, irrelevant, not necessary at all. And you will just simply inhale it from the universe. Because that's all you're doing is inhaling it from the universe, but this imagination it is making that easier at a conceptual basis to begin with. But once you get that feeling of what you are actually inhaling and can sense that, you can just inhale that from the universe without any need for an imagination, external imagination. Then you focus just exclusively on what is happening inside. <clears throat> When you uh, reach a point where your body is full, I advise that you stop there for a minute, pause, and really feel what the element is, is saying to you. you. Fire is saying, I'm warm, I'm heating you up from the inside out, and I'm, oh frenetic activity, you know, all oh, just everywhere. Every part of your body needs to be filled with the fire element. Of course, you want to bypass your heart. You don't want to accumulate the fire element in your heart. Filling your body and having it in your heart at the same time is okay. But you don't want to go beyond that with your heart. So really, just knowing that protects your heart. Because it's in your mind that you won't accumulate the fire element in your heart. And so it just automatically protects your heart. It's not something you need to obsess over. Okay. Um, so the element is filling your body and you need to experience what that feels like. Focus in on those feelings. Try to feel the fullness of that heat. You know, it's spreading throughout your body. Try to feel it in your feet, in the top of your head, in your hands. Feel it everywhere in your body. And feel that frenetic activity everywhere in your body. It's just all so alive. And and constantly moving. And then, when you're ready, at whatever point in this uh, learning you are, begin to increase the, the fire in your body beyond the just full. Okay, you want to increase the intensity, the pressure of the fire 
within your body, the, the constraints you have put on it. So you breathe more of it in, you inhale it in with all your whole body until it builds and builds and builds in pressure. Now, by say 15 to 20 inhalations, you're really feeling that there is pressure on your, your skin, the outside of your body. You know, you become sort of bloated with the fire element. Um, at about 20, 25, you begin to radiate the fire. Okay? The fire has to uh, escape, because it will. You know, fire is one of those things that will uh, penetrate the barrier that you put up to it. Um, <clears throat> at 30 to 40 inhalations, you begin to turn into light. The fire <sighs> creates such dense um, radiance to it. It becomes like a sun to where it is producing light. Its radiation is light. Um, so, learn uh, what that feels like in your body. That's the whole point of these early exercises. It's what does this, what is this in my body? Now, with the fire, it's the heat and the frenetic activity and radiant effect. It wants to burst your seams and just radiate everywhere, okay? With the air, uh, Bardon gives the color blue, uh, a sky blue, and the air it really is, it's the open sky. You know, we're reaching up to the open sky and just rising up into the air. That is the feeling of the air. It is an infinite space. And it's a weightless, a floating, um, and it's calm. It is dead calm. And the air element is interesting. It's, it's always been sort of hard to explain what the air is. It's a combination of fire and water and blah, blah, blah. It doesn't work. Um, it's electromagnetically neutral. Uh, but what I've come to is that the air element is that that space between, that space between the atoms that make us up, that space between the, the, the parts of the atom, the quarks and all that stuff that make up the atom, is the space between all of the substances in the universe. It's in everything. In fact, there's more space, more empty space in the universe than anything else. Um, it's the equivalent of uh, dark matter. Okay? Um, <clears throat> The only thing that passes through that space between is energy, thought, okay, non-particulate energy and non-particulate thought. This passes through that medium of air with uh, faster than light speed. You know, this is what Hermes is all about, you know, with his, the wings on his heels. The air, that space between, it's, it's a magical space. Um, and for us, that's 
weightlessness, expansiveness. And that is what you're inhaling. Is that feeling as you inhale, perhaps the blue, the sky blue color. Is that weightlessness? That absolute stillness? But it's an easy stillness. It's not like the uh, uh, paralysis of the earth element, that sort of, uh, I can't move anywhere kind of still stillness. It's a relaxed stillness. Okay? It's undisturbed. And then with the water, the water inside has a feeling of a fluidness, a fluidity, a, a movement, a rhythmic movement. It's not the frenetic movement of fire or the complete calm of air. It's a, a liquid, you know, it's fluid. Things move and it's cold. Oh, it's ever so cold and that cold sort of shrinks us, sort of like <clears throat> testicles on a cold day, you know. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> sort of draw inside, like when you're really cold, you know, you, you snuggle up into yourself. It's that kind of cold. And that's what you feel. You feel this cold again in the center, and it spreads outwards, spreads to your limbs and to your extremities. So it's cold, and it's, Barton just describes it as icy cold, but the color of water, the classic color of water, uh, uh, just a beautiful translucent blue-green, is the color of ancient glaciers. If you've ever seen photographs of, you know, icebergs floating in the ocean that have this beautiful blue, translucent aquamarine blue color. That's the color of water. And it's, it's really the color of water that is so cold and so dense. But here it's more like water at the bottom of the ocean, way low, where the, the, the cold waters have descended in the, the, um, the pressure is so extreme that the temperature of the water is actually below freezing, yet it's still liquid, okay? So there's this fluidity to it. It's never you know, rigidity of ice. It's the fluidity of fluid water, but the cold of ice. So, you know, in that, that pause when you're feeling the, the effect of the element, do feel that cold and how it, it tends to constrict you, you know, draw you into your core, bring you in, but still there is a rhythmic fluidity to your whole body. It's all fluid inside, okay? And then the earth, well, <clears throat> What has worked the best for me is to empty my body and uh, it's like I'm buried in a universe uh, of loam, of soil that is full of organic matter and is very loose, like something that has been freshly turned and, and aerated for gardening. You know, really loose, fluffy soil. And I inhale that. And it's sort of like uh, shovelfuls of earth being put into a coffin is how it feels. And slowly with each breath, I'm filled up with this earth, this soil. And at about 10 breaths, I'm full. I'm completely full of the soil. And the effect that has is very interesting. It, it's, it, you know, it 
paralyzing in a sense. It's not fully at this point paralyzing. I, I don't feel so rigid that I absolutely can't move. Um, uh, but it, it holds me in place. And it, I feel heavy. You know, I feel the weight of the, the soil added to my own pressing down on the, the bed beneath me or uh, the chair beneath me. Um, I feel heavier. And that's the feeling of the earth, this being held in place and this feeling of weight. You just sink down into the earth. It's like you, you grab hold with roots into the earth and are pulling yourself up and are pulling yourself down. <clears throat> then when I go beyond just being full and start to make it a, a dynamic accumulation where it gets denser and denser and denser and more weighty, I'm, I'm slowly condensing the earth within me turning it into various densities of stone and rock and eventually metal and crystal and metal and lead. You know, at the end I am just a lump of lead, the densest, heaviest material that exists, whatever that may be, if it's not lead. <laughs> but that's the feeling of it, and it is absolutely paralyzing. Um, it's very easy at this stage in accumulating the earth element to just fall asleep, because um, that's, well, the earth element plays a, a big role in the process of going to sleep, and so it mimics um, what you're going through, then it is a way to put someone to sleep is to condense the earth element. Um, so, but mostly it's, it's this feeling of such gravity. And that's sort of hard to describe other than you feel really heavy. Um, but you'll, you'll, you'll understand it. And once you feel it, once you once you make that initial contact with that feeling, and that's why I say you want to carefully examine what it feels like in your body as you're going through this process. You always take a moment to feel what the element is feeling like in your body. And you will, you will feel the heat of fire. You will feel the cold of water. Those two, especially the heat of the fire because it's warming from the inside out and the cold of the water because it's chilling from the inside out. Yeah, those are the strongest feelings. The air is a little more subtle and the earth a little more subtle um, at first. Nowhere, no not less dramatic in their result and their effect upon you, but a little more subtle as you uh, begin to feel them. Again, it, de it depends on you, you know, your constitution. Um, and it, it, it should be noted here that when you are doing this work with the elements, if you are just inhaling the elements, uh, just one breath at a time and then exhaling the element, if you're doing that, there is very little effect on your astral and physical bodies. Okay? If you go, say, to ten inhalations to where your body is full, you know, comfortably full, that has um, a greater effect on your astral and physical bodies. When you dynamically 
accumulate to where you have this pressurized state of the element that has a large effect on your astral specifically and your physical bodies. So you want to approach it slowly. You want to have manageable effects. If you are struggling with your character transformation and you just started step three or you're working in step three, I say either work with just the single breath inhalation of the element several times in a row. You do this often enough and, you know, significantly long enough. Um, like Barden suggests, start with seven breaths in and then exhale the element, inhale the element, exhale the element, inhale it, exhale it. Take your time. You know, you don't have to immediately exhale. You can hold on to it for a few seconds and work through your visualizations and your imaginations and your sensing of the effect of the element. And then exhale the element, inhale it, exhale it. So start with seven breaths like that and work your way up to 30 breaths of inhaling and exhaling and inhaling and exhaling. You do that and you will, I guarantee you, you know, if you're really poor breathing, you're really sucking it in with all of your might, you will make contact, connection with the factual element. It's unavoidable. Okay? Um, so, that will cause li most likely no effect on your character transformation work. So it won't make it more difficult. Um, <clears throat> if you're bringing it to where you're full, it will begin to show in your character transformation because it affects your astral body. You know, you're drawing this into your astral body. If you're drawing it into your physical body, you're drawing it also into your astral body. Just by course of nature, you know. <clears throat> so, it will begin to have some effect. You know, that, that might be positive. It might be negative. In the end, it is all positive. It might, it might bring things to the surface more readily depending on what element you're working with, how you're approaching these exercises, etc. Now, if you're doing the dynamic accumulation, you really need to have made great progress in your character transformation. You really need to have dealt with all of your major character issues by that point. Just for your own self-preservation. Otherwise, you'll be making your life very hard for yourself. Now, some people, that's what they want. They want that extra uh, strong challenge to help so they can prove themselves. And if that's who you are, then, hey, give it a try, you know, um, and good luck. <laughs> um, but, you know, just be careful what you're doing because these will affect specifically the character transformation. And step three is just such a critical place in that transformation that mm, I really advise being careful here. Um, now you can work with the elements one at a time. Uh, master the fire element, then master the air element, then master the water element, and then master the earth element. Uh, or whatever order you choose. Um, it is best to follow that sequence because it is a basic hermetic sequence. Um, but it's, it's not critical. Or, you can work all four elements in one sitting. And that's what I recommend. Uh, I recommend doing your inhalations of the fire element and then, if you're inhaling, exhaling the element, you know, do all those breaths of the fire element, 
and then pause, and then do all those breaths for the air element, and then pause, and the water element, pause, earth element. So that you're doing all four elements in each session of working, and do that twice a day. That take you maybe a half hour, giving you time to contemplate, you know, and to really experience, and etc. You always want to be examining what's going on while you're doing this. You don't want to just do your breaths and blah, blah, blah. Um, this needs to be a significant experience, you know. Um, if you're taking more than, if you're accumulating the elements, to whether either to fullness or to radiance, um, again, do all the work with the fire element, take a pause, reorient yourself, do your work with the air element, and take a pause, reorient yourself, water, and then earth. Um, and that gives you a much more rounded experience of the elements. And it, it's more interesting, too, really. Um, at least, that's what I found. Um, Ah, so, you do your work filling yourself, if you're filling yourself, to whatever, you know, degree you want to do, uh, and again, increase just by one breath per session, so that's two breaths a day, you increase in your progression. You don't want to go faster than that, really. Um... So you, you're full of the element, um, and it comes time to release the element. There are several different approaches to this. Barden's suggestion is you exhale each breath. Again, so you took 30 breaths in, you want to exhale 30 breaths of the element. So you're breathing in just normal air, and you're exhaling uh, the fire element or whatever element. That is one approach. And in this way, you want to rid yourself of the complete amount of the element that you took in. That's the idea. That's why you breathe it out, so to speak. Alt I mean, you can do it any number of ways. Uh, one way that I found very convenient is to sort of open my, my, my body at the bottom and let all the element just drain out uh, my feet. You know, sort of puncture the balloon down there and let it all uh, flush out. Uh, um, and sometimes use my breath to flush my body out, always in this downward sort of uh, movement. Uh, that worked very well for me. Um, also, you can do an explosive release, you know, popping the balloon and uh, all of the element l leaves instantaneously. But again, you have to be respectful of your own body and your own uh, physical, astral, and mental limits. Um, number one, mental limit. You want to assure yourself that you have rid yourself of all the element that you took in. And that's all up here. It's just a matter of self-assurance. You know, no, don't, don't get into the, the trap of worrying, oh, did I get all of that fire element? Is there a little left back here? Oh no. You know, just, okay, it's all gone. And you have to know that it's all gone. Okay, so that's the mental thing. <clears throat> Astrally, you need to disengage with the significance of what is happening in your body. The, the, the feeling of cold, or hot, or weightlessness, or heaviness. You have to let go of that and then physically uh, release those feelings in your body. But there's a difference between the physical feeling of the heat 
and the emotional attachment to the heat or cold or weightlessness. <clears throat> so you've got to let go of all three of those. Now, once you've let go of it, in, in between, like when I shift from uh, the fire element to working with the air element, I take a moment to re-center myself from this experience I've just had with the fire element. And I re-inhabit my body as I am this awareness inhabiting my physical body and I feel every inch of my physical body. And then I consciously inhabit my astral body as well. I feel the energetic of my astral body surrounding my physical body. So I am an awareness within an astral body within a physical body. And this, it's from this place of awareness <clears throat> that I then inhale the element. I always begin my exercise in that place. I am an awareness filling my astral body and my physical body. And I feel all of those bodies. I feel my awareness. I feel my physical body. I feel my astral body. Okay, then I begin inhaling the element. Um, once, <clears throat> once mastered the accumulation of each of the four elements in the body, this to dynamic accumulation of the elements within the body, we move on to <clears throat> localizing the elements to different parts of the body. Now, I start this by accumulating the element in the whole body. Okay, I accumulate the fire in my whole body, and I am radiant with the fire, and I feel the heat in my whole body. And now, I put the fire down into my right foot. Now that's an interesting internal act. So I'm, I somehow <laughs> I'm pressing all the fire through my body. I feel it pressing down in my body. It's leaving up here and pressing down and condensing down all the way into my right foot. Now all that fire, all that dynamic accumulation of the fire that was in my whole body, I have now put in my foot. And it's now radiating out of my foot, even more so because that's a compression of that accumulation into a a smaller space. Because remember, this, this is a physical thing. And this is where you really begin to understand that it is a physical thing, that you can move around, you can manipulate this physical thing. So you put that down in your foot. Leave it there for a while. Really experience what it feels like to have the element in your foot, okay? You want to get to know that experience. Now, to release it from the foot, you can do it, as he suggested, first uh, to, to re let it reflow throughout your body so that the accumulation uh, dissipates again through your whole body. And so your whole body then has the accumulation once again and then release it from your whole body. Or, alternately, what you can do is just release it from your foot. In the same way that you release it from your body, you know, let it escape your foot and return to the universe. That's the easier, quicker way. You go through different parts of your body doing this. You got your right foot, left foot, right leg, left leg, 
you know, all of your body parts, um, whatever seems most significant to you, I suggest that you do work with both hands, really focus on, you know, the, the elements in the hands, uh, the eyes are really good to work with the elements in too, the whole head, um, you know, different organs, this is very good if you have any weak organs. This is you can. This is self-healing, folks. Um, <clears throat> you want to touch on as many parts of your body as you can. And again, in each session that you're working, this this generally takes a bit longer than just accumulating the elements. So you might have to work with just one element at each sitting and go through the various body parts. Then maybe the next sitting go with a different element and, you know, alternate it that way so there is a little more uh, um, balance um, in that process. Um, uh, in, in doing this throughout your body, you are going to learn uh, the limits of the physical body. You are going to learn what it feels like to have a massive accumulation of a fire element in your right foot. Okay? You are going to learn. And that is fundamental for uh, prior <laughs> to doing any healing work, any work with the elements at all, on another person or another being, another anything, you need to know what the element, elements effects are going to be if you project it into something, someone else. That's just fundamental, okay? Now, all the things I've said about the elements also apply to the vital energy. Except the vital energy is a little uh, more simple. With the vital energy, when you genuinely pour breathe with no visualization, you know, no imagination, when you generally pour breathe just normal atmosphere, you will inhale the vital energy energy. It's just that simple. It's what you are inhaling is the vital energy when you pour breathe. And that means sucking in with your whole body. Your body has to be an empty vacuum sucking in energy. That's what you're doing. You're sucking in energy and that is the vital energy. It's everywhere and it's the most readily available energy source uh, there is. It just is. Uh, so, inhaling the vital energy is very easy. The thing you have to do is you have to really closely pay attention to and examine what it is you feel when you pour breathe like that. When you suck in from the universe that energy that you feel, you've got to look at it. You've got to understand what it feels like in your body. And it feels very unique, you know. Um, it's very much like the fire element in terms of frenetic activity, except it's a little more linear, a little more linear uh, frenetic activity. It's not so choppy. Um, it's more like lightning uh, than it is fire. Um, but just a whole bunch of lightning. Ah, oh, jeez. It's, it's, it's gold. 
sort of golden fire, golden flame. Um, and it's very energizing, very stimulating. You will connect with the vital energy. It just is whether or not you recognize it. And when you recognize it, you can build on the more The more you recognize the vital energy, the stronger your inhalation will be. So you start again with the seven breaths. Increase one inhalation every exercise, every session, so two a day, and build up to 30 or 40. I mean, there, there, there is really no limit to how high you can go, but uh, there is a limit to what you can um, stand, you know, what you can weather, you know. You don't want to burn yourself out um, right off the bat. So, you know, once you've accumulated this set amount of vital energy, pause for a minute or two or three and really examine what you're feeling. Get to understand and recognize the feeling and the power of the vital energy. And then the next session, increase again and feel that increase. And feel how it changes the denser that accumulation gets, the more dynamic it gets. And eventually, you will become a radiant star of vital energy. I mean, that, that is no big deal to accomplish. It's just doing it enough. Doing it enough to you get used to accumulating the vital energy. Eventually... You don't need the breath. You don't need to inhale the vital energy. There's one thing that I do in the, um, I think I did in the um, work with the elements. After a while, and it didn't take all that long, when I got to where I recognize the element, you know, the attributes of the element when I am inhaling of the element and was able to inhale the element from the exterior without any need of the exterior imagination, just inhale the element, I discovered that I could actually leave that sort of opening where the element came through, I could leave that open. So it wasn't just inhaling the element, it was always flowing in. So when I inhale, it would bring a massive amount more in, but even when I wasn't inhaling, when I was exhaling air, there was still element coming in. And if you play with that enough, You don't need the inhalation. And eventually, working with the elements and the vital energy, the vital energy first, actually, you get to that point where you don't need to inhale to draw the fire element in. You can simply do it with your will, you know, uh, otherwise known as your creative imagination you know, which is an extension of your will. And as you progress in your magical path, it becomes the equivalent of your will. All you have to do is see that it happens. And it happens. Um, So it's drawn from the universe and is suddenly uh, there. Okay? So that's the extent of it, what I'm going to say for now. I'll probably do more on working with the elements and perhaps the vital energy. Um, So, I hope that was fun. See you next time. Bye-bye.